here's where it gets interesting. As of six months ago, we started seeing the fabrication of ASICs at 16 nanometers. 16 nanometer technology is the cutting edge of computer processing. It's what you see in your latest Apple hardware device. And the exponential growth of performance now hits a wall, because there is nothing better than 16 nanometer technology. In computer terms, we have this law called Moore's Law. And Moore's Law, uh, posited by Gordon Moore, the founder of Intel in the 70s, is the idea that every two years, approximately, computer capacity doubles. And we've been running ahead of Moore's Law, and in fact, it's been doubling uh, in less than 18 months. That sounds really fast, doesn't it? Unless, of course, you've spent the last five years doing a thousand times faster every six months, and suddenly you're down to twice as fast in two years. That's a wall of performance. That means that once you put those 16 nanometer things on the shelf, they're going to sit there for two years, and you don't have the ability to upgrade them. And that now means that the advantage shifts from the economic power of those connected to silicon fabrication to the ability to deliver these devices as consumer devices. Because with the centralization of mining comes one big disadvantage. If you have a thousand terahashes in a warehouse, what happens when the warehouse burns down? What happens when you lose electricity to the warehouse? What happens when you lose cooling to the warehouse? What happens when you have a problem with your investors? The centralization now makes you vulnerable to losing everything. Compare that to the possibility of having a mining chip that's part of a toaster or a water heater that's plugged into your kitchen wall. Well, if you have Instead of one system that produces a thousand terahashes, you have a million systems producing one millionth of that. They're less vulnerable to disruption, because if the power goes out in a whole city, it only affects a small percentage of the devices out there. And it may be unprofitable for now for us in the developing world, but in some places in the world, it's going to become profitable to mine on the latest chips using solar energy and hydroelectric power and renewable sources that are less expensive. Which means that, in my opinion, mining centralization reached its peak in 2015. We're going to see now, it's probably going to continue the wave for another year or so. And in July 22nd, 2016, we have an important event. The reward for Bitcoin blocks is divided by two, half the amount of reward. I think what that will do is it will ensure that anyone who is not mining on the very latest 16 nanometer chips becomes unprofitable, and then we have a level playing field. So, I'm not really worried about that. Um, first of all, because we still have great security, and mining centralization hasn't led to any of the nightmare scenarios that we have imagined in Bitcoin. And secondly, because I think it was an artifact of the race of technology to Moore's law, and now we're done. So again, that was a long explanation. I apologize because it's a very technical topic. Thank you for the question.